Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. I'm Jack Curry, and today I'm joined by Louis Soho, who owns five World Series rings. That's right, five, four of them with the Yankees. He is a savvy baseball man. He's also as friendly a player as you would ever encounter when you were doing interviews. And Louis, as I welcome you into the show, first and foremost, how are you and your family doing during these challenging times? First of all, thank you for having me. Um, hey, my family, we do great. Thank God, you know, in this difficult time, uh, we kind of a little crazy because we want to go out, we got to do things and stuff like that. But uh, the most important thing is to stay safe. So you played 13 years in the major leagues, 848 games played. But let's go back to what I said at the top. You've got five World Series rings, 93 Blue Jays, and then, of course, four with the 96 to 2,000 Yankees. How fortunate do you feel that you were connected to those teams and that while you were a contributor, you were also in the right place at the right time with some great players? Yeah, you're right. I mean, like you say, I'm very fortunate, you know, to have those rings because in 93, even that I had the ring, I was hurt the most part of the year. I have a rib cage, uh, uh, poor muscle for almost like two months at the end of the season. So I, I, won't, I wasn't be able to, uh, to participate with the team. So I went home. I went home. I'm, I'm, I was very sad. And I, I told my wife, wow, man, you know, 90, I got traded to, uh, after the season, I got traded to the Angels. Uh, I was two years there, and I thought I wanted to be there for a long time. And then they traded me back to the Jays. And then things went, like, it's very strange. So I said, you know what? I don't know what if I still can play this game because. Uh, and then I went to I went to the Seattle Mariners when we play you guys or our guys <laughs> in '95, and I thought I was okay. Now I'm gonna be set. I'm okay. And then Alex Rodriguez appeared in '96, so it's time for me to go. <laughs> and uh, you know they put me on waivers. Uh, at the end of the season in 96. So the Yankees picked me up. And uh, the soon I get to New York, I say, wow, this, this is kind of different. I mean, by the way people is talking. You know, just, just to see people talking about the Yankees was all about win. You know, just to put the pink stripes. And then and, and every, every way that you go to the stadium, you see Ray Jackson and Phil Rizzuto. And you see the Yogi Bear, all those guys. And you say, Hold on, man. Hold on. I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch this guy, you know? So, like you say, I'm very fortunate to, especially to play with all the group of guys that I play with. Uh, it was something very amazing. So they pick you up, as you said, off waivers, late August, 96. They needed somebody to back up your buddy, Jeter. Jeter was going to play most of the time, but they wanted to give him a couple of days off. So you're saying that when you walked onto that 96 Yankee team, the focus was winning. And you had to jump on board, Louis, because they, they're thinking postseason, World Series, and you're being added to that, that moving train, so to speak. Right, right. Um, you know, when you get there, especially late in the season, you, you don't know nobody. You know because you play against those guys uh, a year back. Um, but I played with Jens Nelson in Seattle. I played with Tino Martinez and, um, in Seattle. And they were, they were there already. So... They, they welcome me the, and they say, man, we need people like you, you know, because I always joking around, talking to people, and uh, you start to fit in right away, you know, and, and that's what I did. And I remember the thing that really set the tone for me was when I talked to Posada, and um, we were talking about Gide, you know, his first year as a full-time short stop. Um, he got little trouble, turned over place and stuff like that. And Posada come to me and say, man, Let's help him. Let's help him out. And, uh, you know, I used to love that. I used to love that because when I was in Seattle, uh, you know, Aero was uh, like 18 years old. So me and Phyllis and me, we see, he always asked questions. So I told Posada, you know what, man? Last year, I was the, uh, at the end of the season, I was the everyday show stuff. So I don't know how she's going to take that. I'm talking about Jeter. So he said, oh, don't worry about it. I take care of it. I take care of it. So I was the kind of guy that I never liked to, get to the ballpark that early, like 1.30 or 
I always hear that, like, 3.30, before this, it's stress and stuff like that. So Posada talked to Gide, and that was a big mistake on my part, like, because I have to be on the ballpark like a 1.30 every single day for a month. But the, the funny part about this is, like, okay, we we work, and uh, he got a lot better, you know, in, turn, in terms of turn double plays. He used to like to leap over the approaching runner, the sliding runner. And what he told me was, you said, that's going to take a lot of wear and tear on your body. You can use the base to sort of push off the base and not have to always leap over the runner. Was that one of the things you taught him? That's, that's exactly, because he cannot swipe his, his foot. He said he don't feel comfortable doing it. So, okay, okay, I say, just receive the ball and push yourself. And then he was... You know, because he's, he had the ability to turn over play no matter what, because before you don't have to touch the bag. You just got it. You know, and the umpire already called time. I mean, I call out. So he, but he used to go towards the runner. I said, you, you are very young right now, and you can get away with it. But when you get older, you're going to have problems. So we got to fix that right, at, right now. So push yourself. And he, you know, he clicked right away. He clicked right away. Thank God, because I'm going to be in the ballpark at 130 every day. <laughs> Louis, when you look back at those Yankee teams that won from 96 to 2000, four World Series titles in five years, there's only 11 players who have a ring from every year. And I think you would be the great answer to a trivia question because everybody would say, okay, the core four, Bernie, probably Cone, probably O'Neal. You're one of those 11 players. How much pride do you feel in knowing that you are such a big part of that legacy? Well, I believe I got to call myself like a, the 11 court, right? <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's a special. That's a special because all those guys that you mentioned, Andy, uh, Mariano, Gide, uh, Posada, and, and, and when you got Bernie and, and Paul O'Neill and, and that group, it's just like, wow. I mean, I play with these great players. And uh, not just that, they were a great teammates because we, we were so unique. I mean, the chemistry of the team. Uh, leading by Joe Torre, that was, I mean, that was something like, I was in heaven, you know, because I, in my career, I was all over the place. Uh, Blue Jays, Anaheim, Seattle, back to the Blue Jays. And then when I got to the Yankees, I say, wow, uh, this is what I want to be, you know, and uh, it's got a lot to do with my teammates, coaching staff, and, uh, and and I always mention Dan Seaman. Dan Seaman really, he really pushed me, he really helped me out. And uh, he wasn't one of the person that said, Louis, when you understand who's, what's your role and what you can bring for this team, and when you understand that, you're going to be here a long time. And, and I, you know, I spent seven years there. And I, and I believe I did my job. Louis, I'm going to ask you to go back in history with me. October 26th, 2000, ninth inning, couple guys on base, outliers on the mound, Louis Soho's at the plate. Game five of the World Series, what happened next? Well, uh, I, I can say this because um, we live, and, uh, but I remember, one thing that I remember, um, you know, first of all, I told Duke that I'm going to be, my bat is going to be the game winning. That was like in the fourth inning. I said, you're going to hold on to this bat because I'm going to win the game with this bat, right? So when Duke can give me that look like, you must be crazy. When I stepped on, on the on the circle, I had another bat. So I remember, no, oh, that's not the bat. So I threw it to him. Duke, give me that bat. So he threw it to me. <laughs> and then he went to the clubhouse. He went to the clubhouse, right? So I, I walked to the play, and then he comes, uh, Bobby Valentine, so to our lighter, whether he's going to make a move or not, John Franco. So, so Lee Masili, <laughs> when he was the first main coach, he comes to me, no, he walked to a play and he yelled at me like, don't you should take the first pitch, be aggressive. He's going to throw you faster than down the middle. You know, I wasn't one of the players that I, and it was hard for me to swing the first pitch. But it's a lot of, lot of, lot of emotions in, in, in my mind because my, I lost my dad like a year ago. So that way was kind of, I was kind of, I don't know. I don't know how to feel. I'm sad. You know, I was sad. I was happy because I was in the World Series. So uh, and when Lee Masili comes to me, I, I start laughing. I said, okay, 
it makes sense. I'm going to jump on this fish because you knew I like to start throw the powder inside. That's going to be in and in and in. So I know it's come way inside. I'm not going to have a chance. So I did that. And uh, on my way to first base, second base, I was kind of crying because I was thinking about my dad. Mm. But when I got when I got to a third base and Willie, Willie hit me at the home man and I don't boy. So I start looking at my family and I start smiling. And that was definitely my whole life. I mean, uh, we were, we're still talking about that as a family and the fans every time they see me. Like, that's a good moment. That was Al Leiter's 142nd pitch. He actually did an interview with Yes about that game recently. And he talked about how that, that baseball had eyes. You put it in play, and I, I think it bounced four times, Louie, before it made it into center field. But it found the hole, which is all you were trying to do. You know what? Uh, the first time I saw Al, after after the World Series, like three, four years ago, whatever. And, uh, you know, he's funny, dude. I love him. He goes, man, I make you famous. <laughs> so I say, you did. You did. Louie, when you uh, look back at your career, you come to Old Timers Day in 2003, <laughs> play in the Old Timers game, and then later in the season, you re-sign with the Yankees, and you're back being a regular player. Without even looking, I, I don't think anybody in baseball history has ever done that. What compelled you to do that? How did that all work out? What do you remember about that that whole season? So when Jeter got hurt, I think it was late in the August, I don't know, before the, the playoffs, he got hurt, and then uh, they called me at the office. And I said, how you doing? I said, oh. Before they called me, I said, well, what did I do wrong? Did I do something wrong? I scratched my head. Because John Torre and Cashman called me at the office. What, what the hell is going on? So I get in. He goes, what do you think? Uh, you got hurt, but uh, we don't have nobody ready. In the minor leagues right now, we're not going to get somebody from another team. But we see you taking ground ball, and you're looking very good. You're sticking. I said, oh, yeah, that, they, they play with me. They're joking around. Something scammer around me. So I say, hey. You know me. You know I'm not going to say no. You need me. I'll be available. And um, to be honest with you, Jack, when that happened and I realized I'm in the 25 roster, I'm a big league once the game. I was so scared. I was so scared. So like when I took that at bat as a pinch hitter for Giambi, I feel like it was my first big league at bat. Mm. And that, <laughs> that's what I turned down. And uh and then uh, in the double header, Joe Torre gave me like, give me the second game against Baltimore, and I went off for four. And uh, okay, I think it's time for me to retire once again. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, last question: If we had to come up with a title for the Louis Soho baseball story, I know first of all that the picture is going to be <laughs> you after the hit against Lighter, because that's the big smile. But what would be the headline? What would be the title of the Louis Soho baseball story? Oh, I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> why why I'm the man? Because you were ready for whatever they threw at you? Right, because if you need me, I'm going to be there for you. So I'm the man. You know, it's like, I always was ready for that. And then I want to show my, my managers, my coaches, that I want to be part of the team, not just another guy on the bench. I want to be part of the team. And that, and that, and that thing... I show that to my managers, like every time they put me, when you realize and say, you know what? You got, that's your job. Prepare for that. And, and, and Joe Torre, he was the best on do that. He told you, hey, Lou, you know what? One time he told me, Nate, hey, when we get Scott Brochus before, I know you went to the last question, but I got to say this. When we got Scott Brochus, right? They called me at the office. For some reason, Joe used to call me at the office. And oh my God, what now what? And then uh, he said, hey, uh, in April, you got to find a way to stay ready because Tino played 140 games. Nabla, we got Nabla. He, he played 140 games. Jiri played 152 games. <laughs> and we got this guy, Scott Brochus, which... I have to see what he can do. So in April, you're not going to play. I say, what? <laughs> you're not going to play? Well, I never play, but in April, so my first at bat, did I remember that there was an April, like 20-something. I almost killed myself, but, uh, you know, 
you got to realize that uh, you got to be ready for your job. You got to understand what's your role, and uh, that's what I did with the Yankees. Well, Louis, I want to thank you for being the man for us today. It, it was always a pleasure to talk to you. You were always a, a welcome person in the clubhouse. You, you welcomed reporters over to your uh, locker, and you were candid and honest with us, which I always appreciate. So all the best to you and your family, and I, I hope I see you at a ballpark soon. Thank you, Jerry. It was nice to talk to you, and uh, stay safe.